And uh, joining us in the studio this morning and on the line as we have this uh, st- conversation with Kyle Moodry. Uh, Kyle, of course, with Indiana Borough. He is uh, the Communication and Grants Coordinator. And Henry McKay from Solar United Neighbors on the line with us as well. Good morning to Henry and good morning to you, Kyle. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to have you both on the air with us here today. Kyle, let's start with you. Um, the Solar Co-op, we uh, have uh, had this discussion before about what's going on in terms of solar energy in Indiana. We've got two new solar stop signs already. How about that? Absolutely, yeah. Those uh, those were put up last week. Mm-hmm. Um, they were commissioned by our Public uh, Safety Commission, and they were actually given to us through PennDOT and their local road improvement program. Yeah, and. Uh, so public safety kind of poured over the traffic crash data, and they decided the two intersections that needed it most were Grant and uh, Wayne Avenue and 6th Street and Washington Street. So we put them up there, and uh, I've checked them over the weekend. They are they do flash at night, so mm-hmm. they're working as planned. And There you go. Well, we see them all about the county in, uh, in areas that, that are identified as, uh, as danger signs. But our conversation this morning... Uh, gets a little bit deeper than than just solar stop signs, doesn't Absolutely. it? And that's why Henry's on the line with us too. Yeah, it goes to uh, the residential solar, which is uh, rooftop solar, more yeah. commonly known. And Henry can uh, go into that. Um, our solar co-op is doing phenomenal. I think it's really grown from the last time we were on here in November. So, Henry, tell me about it. Uh, what kind of progress has been made in the last four or five months? Oh, well, there, there's been a lot of interest and a lot of enthusiasm. We had a total of 51 people sign up for this Indiana County Solar Co-op so far, um, which is a, a really good number to have. Um, and uh, of those 51 people, already eight of them have signed a contract for a solar installation with Groundhog Solar, who's our, our selected installer. Mm-hmm. That's a pretty good rate, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It, it And... Uh, we're optimistic that many more people will be signing contracts, and then we have one more chance for people to learn about the solar co-op uh, and join tomorrow down in Blairsville. All right. So, Kyle, tell us about that meeting. Yeah. So um, it's going to be our third that we've had so far. Our first one was uh, here in Indiana Borough, uh, sort of the center of the county. And then our second one we kind of had up north, up in Marion Center. And uh, there was very uh, inclement weather that day, but it was still – Overall, a good turnout, and I mm-hmm. think that it generated the awareness and that it needed to, which was great. And so now we're going down south, down to uh, Blairsville, and we're going to do one more kind of push to try to get as many people can- in this month that we can in the county. Um, I know I'm also sending out uh, emails to uh, the County Borough Association to try to get all of our elected officials in the county to kind of also jump in on this push, because I think this is a great opportunity, and while we would love to do another solar co-op again uh, for this first go around this is the deadline at the end of this month yeah. so we really want to get as many people in that were kind of thinking about it but haven't really pulled the trigger to say yet we really want them to jump in henry help us understand uh, the the whole issue here because I'm, I'm sure that there's some some misinformation or some misconceptions about what the solar co-op is seeking to do uh, and and how this will all be implemented. It's not just a matter of uh, going outside, cutting off the lines uh, from your utility company, and uh, going all sunshine, is it? Yeah, and I don't don't recommend I don't recommend doing that. So, so most <laughs> people who go solar they remain connected to the electricity grid, um, and the reason for that is because then you can use the electricity grid like uh, a big battery. So when you uh, you may be overproducing electricity more than you need. Um, during the sunny parts of the year, and you can export that extra electricity back into the grid. The utility gives you a credit on your bill for it, and then you can draw down those credits during the cloudier months when you're not getting as much sun as you need to generate electricity. Yeah, yeah. So so that is a really, really big advantage is the fact that um, uh, it, it really opens up more options for you and, and really helps you to take a look at that electric bill you got coming in every month and say, you know, it doesn't need to be this big. That's right. Yeah, it's uh, you know probably the the biggest reason that that most people go solar is for those savings, the savings on your electricity bill. If you uh, because solar has gotten so affordable, the technology has gotten so affordable in recent years. Uh, if you take the spread out the cost of your solar installation over the twenty five thirty year lifetime of that system, that's cheaper electricity than you're typically buying from your electric utility. 
All right, so let's understand exactly what we're buying into here. Kyle, um, help us to understand here. Um, what you're buying into when you join the solar co-op. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. As Henry uh, alluded to, you're, you're saving money. <laughs> so you're buying into savings for virtually the rest of the time that you're living in that home. Yeah, and the system that you are having constructed at your house, Henry, what does that look like? Well, it, it, uh, each person is getting a, a customized uh, solar system that's built for their home, their energy usage, their budget, their preferences. Um, but typically, you're having uh, solar panels either on the roof, or some people, if they have the space, will mount them on a rack on the ground if they have some sunny uh, land available. Um, there's going to be an inverter uh, or microinverters that will turn that that DC electricity, direct current produced by your solar panels, into AC electricity, alternating current that you is what you use in your home. Um, some people might get batteries to use as backup power in the event of power outages. Some people might even get an electric vehicle charger installed so they can charge. If they have an electric vehicle, they can charge it from their solar panels and um, drive on, you know, essentially v- very low gas prices if you're charging your electric car from your solar panels. Yeah, all of those. And it, it doesn't sound like it's an extremely complicated type of system to operate. Once it's installed, uh, it might look intimidating at first, but it, it, that's really just appearances. Uh, once you get into it, uh, it, it seems like it's a fairly simple thing. Yeah, once once it's installed, it's it's a very user friendly experience. So there's not a lot of maintenance or kind of you're not going to be, need to be tinkering with it uh, a lot during this of it. And um, you know, most systems now are remotely monitored over the internet, so they'll they'll report out their production. You know, you can check on your smartphone or on your computer what your solar system is producing that day. And often it'll also report to your installer or to a manufacturer who can identify if there's some kind of problem with uh, some component of your system. Kyle Moodry in the studio with his communications and grants coordinator for the borough of Indiana. Henry McKay is on the telephone with us uh, representing Solar United Neighbors. Uh, and uh, this this uh, partnership that you formed with Henry and his company, Kyle, uh, it seems like it's really worked well for you. Absolutely, yeah. It's been a... Uh... It came out of our sustainability summit that we had last uh, September with the sustainability task force. And uh, Henry came and gave a presentation, and I, we were just we, – we wanted to go solar. Here was a perfect opportunity to go solar, so it just worked out perfectly. And I think that the partnership that we've built is – like I said, this is just kind of the first go-around. I think that we will – want to pursue having another co-op in indiana county again especially mm-hmm. once we get familiar with the process as we already have in the last couple months so i think it's invaluable to sort of to have somebody like solar united neighbors give us the technical assistance to kind of guide our way through and it goes even beyond just helping us with the co-op like henry has just recently told uh the borough about an opportunity for a designation it's called soul smart and um, the, we, are, we as staff are going to be looking into, we're having a cons- consultation next week to see if we can get this designation because it will help us with uh, funding efforts and just recognition. And there's, I don't think there's any soul smart communities in western Pennsylvania, so mm-hmm. we have an opportunity to be a leader. And this is just one of the many things that has come out of working with Henry and Solar United Neighbors. Well, and, yeah, in, we're, we're grateful. <laughs> in Indiana County has always been uh, pretty much energy generated here. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, so meetings um, north, south, and, and central, and south is coming up. Uh, give us the details on that. And what are people going to experience at the meeting? That is tomorrow, April 10th, 530 to 7 p.m. in Blairsville Park and Recreation uh, Multipurpose Room. Uh, the address is 101 East North Lane, Blairsville, PA. Mm-hmm. And uh, the, you will hear Henry uh, sort of just give the breakdown of why it's in your best interest to go solar and how simple and affordable it really is. And Henry, I, I know that people have the opportunity to really ask you detailed questions and uh, and have those answers that uh, can help them move forward in this process. That's right. You know, going solar is, is as it has gotten a lot cheaper in recent years, but it still is a fairly big investment for most households, and it's something you want to do in a very informed and careful way. So, I want to emphasize the word, you know, we're not a, uh, a for-profit company. We are a nonprofit. Um, and so our role is to be a consumer advocate and a consumer advisor to help people do this in a really smart way to make them feel like they're, they're making uh, the right investment for their homes. Um, so these solar info sessions are a great opportunity to understand how, how all the technology works, how all of this 
generates electricity on your home, um, how you pay for it, how it saves you money uh, to enable people to make that informed decision about going solar. All right. Very good. Kyle, nobody needs to call ahead of time or register, do they? They can just come? Um, it's You can RSVP, but if you just show up, that'll be okay, too. Very good. Very good. That's happening tomorrow night, Blairsville. Time again? 5.30 to 7 p.m. At? Uh, the Blairsville Park and Recreation Multipurpose Room. Very good. Thanks both. Henry, thanks for being with us on the line today. My pleasure. All right. And Kyle, thanks to you and for coming in. Thank you. It is the voice of Indiana County, WCCS, AM 1160 and 101.1 FM.